Here in the office today, we have a little bit of a confusing Chromebook. It is the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 16-inch. And if those words together sound a little bit familiar, well, this gaming Chromebook that they released at the end of 2022 uh, probably comes to mind. So let's sort this out. Okay, so we will come back to this, the Lenovo gaming Chromebook. It is an IdeaPad as well. Um, but let's let's sort out what's going on here. Um, we got a note from Lenovo that a new IdeaPad 5 um, 16 inch Chromebook was available. Uh, it's priced at 455, so that was intriguing to start, but then we realized it's basically spec the exact same as the lower spec of the gaming Chromebook that they just released. And that device has been available off and on at Walmart for less than what this one goes for. So this one is $455 over at Lenovo. Um, it's a Core i3 12th gen, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Uh, and the rest of it basically kind of lines up with what we've seen in the gaming Chromebook, except it's not gonna have the 120 Hertz screen on it. Um, I don't think it's QHD either. We'll check that when we get in here. Um, so this is a, the, the gaming one is a QHD 120 Hertz screen at 350 nits. So we'll see how the screen stacks up against that. Um, so you're losing that. And then, you know, I, people are back and forth on the RGB keyboards, but you don't get the RGB keyboard here either. And it's 20 or 30 bucks more expensive. Now granted the, the 420, 430 dollars that the gaming Chromebook is going for over on Walmart right now is a sale price. So yes, the MSRP technically is higher on the gaming Chromebook by a little bit. Uh, it's not too much though. I want to say it's 499 regularly or something close to that. Um, so I don't know, this one's curious to me. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on here because at the end of the day, this device doesn't look like a gaming Chromebook. It's not like it's got, you know, crazy things all around the outside and the RGB keyboard can just be flipped over to white and you wouldn't even know it's an RGB keyboard. So if that's like a turn off, I mean, at least it's got a 120 Hertz panel on it. That looks really good. Um, pretty standard charger here. So yeah, uh, ultimately I said yes to this device coming in mainly because I was just curious. Yeah, look at there. There you go. I'm gonna put this right up here so you can see it. You tell me which one's which. I don't know. If I if I get them mixed up, we're going to be in trouble. But I'll know from the RGB keyboard. So, anywho, let's open this thing up here. Um, yeah, it's the same key for. I mean, this is the same. This is the same Chromebook. Turn both around here, and you can see really quickly, like that. That's the exact same chassis. The exact same thing. Um, again, this one. This one has like a glossier, uh, more satin like finish to the keys and probably that's uh, coated in such a way that lets the RGB come through maybe on it. Um, and so this one feels more like a standard keyboard. So that's kind of like a chalky type feel to it. Oh, thank you. Screen is nice and bright. Um, I would say it's probably on par um, with, I think our, our gaming one's dead over here. Uh, so we might cut away here in just a second, and give it some juice just so we can properly compare the two. But you're getting a, a shutter up here at the top uh, for your camera, which I would presume is the same um, 1080p camera. We'll check that again. Um, speakers up top. Uh, let's see, we got backlighting on the keyboard here. Does not look to be backlit. So you're, you're just losing backlighting period across the board. Um, same trackpad that Mm, I don't think that's glass. Some of these plastics and stuff are getting so good on these trackpads that it's really hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that's not glass. Uh, plastic chassis, but you know, decently firm. It doesn't feel super flimsy or floppy. Again, it's, it's the same thing as this gaming Chromebook that we've already talked about. Port selection around the side here. We've got a USB type C, a, a headphone microphone, micro SD card slot around here, another USB type a, another USB Type-C, Kensington. Um, so again, nothing different here. It's a Core i3, it's eight gigs of RAM, it's 128 gigs of storage, same spec, uh, except you're, you're missing out on a couple things, uh, namely the 120 Hertz screen and the backlighting on the keyboard. But I'm gonna go ahead and get logged into this thing real quick uh, so that we can check some of these things out and figure out um, if this is even a device that I would recommend that you go pick up when this one is available. So hang tight. Okay, so I've got logged in and all that kind of stuff. And there are a couple things that you definitely need to know um, after just a few minutes with this Chromebook. For one, 
uh, comparing the two. Even though the keyframes look the same and the keys are all in the same places, you know, they both have full size like numeric keypads on the side, which is, you know, it's a nice touch to have. Uh, they're not those little squished ones like Asus likes to put on theirs. Uh, the trackpad is definitely plastic, which is fine. It's plastic over here too. Uh, but this keyframe is not as good as what you get on the gaming version of this Chromebook. Now, granted, the gaming one has that anti-ghosting tech in there, so you can hit lots of keys at one time and it'll pick them all up. So my guess is the keyframe might be a little bit different and you can feel it. Um, the keycaps on here are cheaper and the keyframe is not anywhere near as good as this one. Uh, this one's way, the, the gaming one is way more pleasurable to type on. Um, so know that. And then uh, another concerning thing, um, I'll, I'll uh, to be fair, I'm gonna turn it, excuse the cord here. Like I said, we, we haven't messed with this one for a week or so and it is dead, or it was dead. Um, I'm gonna turn these here and I'm gonna play, um, let's see, let me go back to the actual uh, intro roll here so you can hear a little bit of music and you'll hear a little bit of voice on both of them and you will notice they're both turned up all the way. You'll notice a distinct difference. Hands on time with this thing, so let's not waste any more time and jump right in the box. Not bad, but not loud. I don't have to raise my voice to talk before over that. Before we get into it, this video is brought to you by Penovo. Now, yeah, same exact clip. This thing, so let's not waste any more time and you jump can tell right in the box. Immediately. Much louder. Still the same fullness, but far but louder before speakers. Before we get into it, this video is brought to you. So now you've got a degraded speaker experience as well. Well, I'll leave this actually turned around here to Joe so you can kind of look at this as well. Uh, side by side. This is, I did confirm, a 1080p, so it's 1080p plus, so 1920 by 1200. So you're still getting a 16 by 10 uh, aspect ratio here at 16 inches. But uh, this is the, again, this it's 60 hertz, this one's 120 hertz. Uh, so you get those nice silky frame rates. Uh, this one is Quad HD as well, so all the stuff on the screen just looks a lot sharper. But then just look at the colors. Hopefully you can pick that stuff up on, on the secondary camera here. The colors here are just richer. Uh, everything just looks better across the board. Everything over here looks a little bit washed out. And it did as soon as I logged in and, and started moving around the OS. It felt like I was a little bit washed out, like the all the colors just aren't quite there. And for a guy like me that's a little color deficient, I mean, I just pick up on that stuff really quickly and just... It, I. I need the extra colors to make things look, you know, probably normal to my eyes uh, for most people. And so now we're talking about a degradation in the screen, uh, not just the, the resolution, the resolution's lower, the, the refresh rate's lower, the colors are not as good, um, a degradation in the speakers, a degradation in the keyframe, and there is no, there's no backlighting on the keys either. So yes, the internal specs are the same on both of these devices. Yes, they bear a striking resemblance one to the other um but they are not the same chromebook so when it comes down to it if you're going to go buy a chromebook you're, you you like the idea of a 16 inch chromebook you like the idea of a lenovo you like the idea of having a number pad and whatever it is about these chromebooks that you happen to like there's just no universe where i would tell you to go pick up this one this new one versus the gaming one i mean the gaming one comes with all kinds of better stuff and it's not just silly little additions these are things that are going to make your experience better it's a backlit keyboard whether you choose to make it colored or not it's up to you it's got better speakers. It's got a better screen overall, not just resolution. It's got a better screen just completely across the board. So uh, it's a confusing addition to the Lenovo Chromebook lineup for sure. And I'm not completely convinced that it even needs to exist at this point with the gaming Chromebook out there. So I would highly recommend if you're looking at this device, go look at the gaming Chromebook. It's available at Walmart all the time. It's always on sale. It's a much better deal. You're going to be much happier with your purchase if you pick it up. And uh, that's it for this one. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button. Be sure to ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.